This one gives a little bit more on voltmeters. At the end of this section, I'll show you what a voltmeter, an analog voltmeter, looks like inside. And so you can see what's actually in it that makes these things do what they do. This circuit is a schematic representation of a voltmeter hooked across two lines. Now the voltmeter is, and in this case we're using an analog voltmeter, um, this is actually the movement of the voltmeter right here. And it's actually the load of this circuit. Resistor, I guess, is also a load tube. We place this resistor in series with this to limit the amount of current that can go to the voltmeter. And I would vary this resistor for uh, ranges that I wanted it to operate in. So power is going to pass through the resistor. The voltage is going to be reduced and then it's going to pass through the movement which is going to deflect the needle according to how much power has come through here. Now we've got 240 volts here and it is going to be reduced a certain amount by that resistor and then so a limited amount of power will go through this. Now if I were to increase this voltage here using the same resistor then this would have more power tra traveling through it and it would deflect the meter higher. It would go farther. It would be a stronger magnet in the movement of the meter. So that's really how a voltmeter works. A voltmeter is actually a load and it is used as a parallel load. If you look at this diagram, you can see I've got a light down here. This light is the prime mover load of this circuit. The voltmeter is actually in the same uh, general circuit in parallel. Voltmeters are almost always used in parallel. Uh, with a load or a switch or whatever you want to use. If I was to take my meter probes instead of running them to here and running them down here, I would read very close to the same voltage as I did up where I am. This is also reading the voltage drop of the circuit. That means the voltage available to the circuit. When I say voltage drop, I mean the voltage available to the circuit. There's 240 volts available to this circuit. This is going to read what that is. Now I've changed where these wires are going on the voltmeter. If you'll notice my wire to L2 is in the same place, but the wire instead of going over to the 240 volt side is going to here. Now is this going to read voltage drop? Well, yes it is. So what is it going to read voltage drop of? It's going to read voltage drop of this wire and this wire here. That's what it's doing. Anytime I, you know, it's a parallel circuit here again. It's, this is in parallel with this wire here. Now there's no load on it or anything like that, so the voltage drop is going to be extremely low, and most meters won't read it. However, if this is a very long wire, there would be some voltage drop across it, and the voltmeter would read it. Now I may have to change this resistor in order to get the voltmeter to read that low voltage. I would have to reduce the size of this resistor to allow more power to go through the movement of the meter, but I could do this, and this is done. That is the voltage drop of that circuit. Because I had my wire over here before, I was reading the voltage drop of the entire circuit. But now I'm just reading the voltage drop of this wire. Now here again, I've changed the position of this wire. 
I moved it over to here. What would I read for voltage drop here? Well, I'm going to read the, the same exact voltage drop that I read with the wire over here. The only difference would be is if there was high resistance in this line, then I would read a lower voltage drop. That's the only difference there could be. When I had the wire over here, all I was reading was the voltage drop of that wire. But when I included the load in it, I'm reading the voltage drop uh, across this whole circuit from here to here. And the only modifier on this would be as this wire was very long or very small. I hope this goes a little farther to explaining the uh, use of the voltmeter. I am going to show you some uh, video of how a, uh, an analog meter works and uh, what the movement looks like so you get an idea of what it's actually doing. But this is just a little more trying to explain what that voltmeter, what it's actually doing and what it is. One of the ways I'm going to explain how the voltmeter works is by using one of these old analog meters. For the most part we don't use these much anymore, although they do have some value. But they have a needle. And this needle moves back and forth depending on the amount of voltage read through the uh, probes. Well, what makes a needle move? And that's kind of basic to how voltmeters work. So let's see if we can figure out how that needle actually moves. Okay, in order to attempt to explain how this meter, the meter movement itself works, we're going to have to get in real close. Uh, I'm just showing you one of the old meters, at least part of one. There's a needle here. Now this needle moves back and forth. And you see what's moving with the needle? That's a little tiny winding. There's actually wire on that little copper looking thing. And if you notice the dimpled uh, sort of silver part that's formed around it, that goes almost all the way around it, that is a piece of iron. It's actually laminated. And when power goes through that little winding that's uh, in the center, then it tries to align with the iron of that core around it. It actually turns that little thing, the little movement, into a magnet, and it starts trying to align up north and south. Uh, so it is going to move to uh, to try to line up. Well, there's a spring that works against it, a very tiny little spring that keeps the needle here, back at the zero point. Well, if the uh, electricity is strong enough, it overcomes the spring and moves the needle up to whatever the, the uh, uh, measurement is. So it's an analog type meter, meaning it moves as far as it uh, has power to move for. And so it's, all it is is an electromagnet in the center uh, on some like watch bearings. And as power passes through those little windings there, then the needle will move up according to the strength of the signal it's getting through those windings. Okay, here I've taken the back off of one of these meters. Okay, if you look in the back, you can see all those resistors back there. And if I look in the side, I can see right here, there's some adjustable resistors. 
that's for calibrating the uh, meter. So, what they do is if I look in the front again, you can see you've got this dial and you can move it to whatever position you want. And what that does is put resistors, like back here, in series with the meter so that it limits the power that goes to the meter. And of course the resistors are set up to make readings in certain voltage ranges. So that essentially what the voltmeter is, is a current sensitive device that as the voltage increases, that's the pressure behind the electricity, it pushes a specific amount of power through whatever resistor is put in line with it and that will deflect the needle. So they're a very high resistance load. They're a tiny little, that little meter on the other side, the movement was actually the load. So when I put this in uh, across a load, I read the voltage drop across the load. Now of course if I have the right number of resistors in series with the meter, then it'll read in the range I want it to read in. If it's not, it won't read in the range I want it to read in. So those resistors are very important. But the important thing about this issue is these are very high resistance loads that are placed uh, in parallel with another load, like maybe I've got a light bulb or a fan motor. If I put that meter, put the probes across that load in parallel, it provides a uh, another load in parallel which takes a portion of the power that goes through the circuit, very limited portion, very small, and I can read the voltage drop that way. 